While busily working on the inspired translation of the New Testament, Joseph Smith and Sidney Rigdon read John 5.29 and wonder if heaven might include multiple kingdoms based on how people choose to live their lives. Discussing these thoughts with a small gathering of elders, an incredible vision of eternity unfolds, which only Joseph and Sidney can see. The other elders in the room feel the vision and sit mesmerized while Joseph and Sidney describe it. First, they see Jesus Christ standing beside God the Father in glory, surrounded by angels. Love, acceptance, and joy radiate from them. One of the angels rebelled against the only begotten Son and was thrust down from the presence of God the Father. The heavens wept over him, for he is Lucifer, a son of the morning, and he is fallen. He became the devil, determined to make everyone else as miserable as himself. Now, before we were born on earth, we lived there too. Our life on earth is part of the great plan of happiness. But what happens after our mortal journey? After we die, are judged, and are resurrected, where will we go? Okay, everyone, I'm your ride operator and guide, so please climb aboard the ride, Visions of Eternity! Strap in, sit back, and hold on to that iron rod in front of you. Ready? Here we go. Three, two, one, launch. Writers, stay seated and hold tight. Joseph and Sidney's vision of eternity will now give us a glimpse of the realms that await humankind after Judgment Day. And our first destination takes us diving, diving, diving into the deepest, darkest abyss. Oh no, where are we? This is outer darkness. These are the sons of perdition. Don't fear, very few from Earth will ever go there. These are people for whom there is no forgiveness in this world or the next because they rejected Christ, even with a perfect knowledge of who He is, and fought openly against the Father and His plan, and so are doomed to suffer the wrath of God with the devil and His angels in eternity. But look, don't worry, there's hope. Except for these sons of perdition, every man and woman will receive a kingdom of glory in the mansions above. Let's get out of here and check it out. Shall we? Yes, would you look at that? This is more like it. This is the heavenly vision of the telestial kingdom. As we see, it's as glorious as the stars and surpasses all understanding. However, these folks here are they who are liars, sorcerers, adulterers, whoremongers, and whosoever loves and makes a lie. They didn't receive the gospel or the testimony of Jesus and suffer the wrath of God on earth. But look, because of a loving heavenly father, they still receive some glory according to their own works and an amazing place in this world. They'll be servants of the Most High, though where God and Christ dwell, they cannot come. Now we're about to see something even better. Hold on to that iron rod. Next up, the terrestrial world. Notice the difference of the glory of the moon compared to that of the stars. Check it out. These here didn't receive the testimony of Jesus in the flesh because they were blinded by the craftiness of men, but they did receive it afterwards. In this kingdom, they enjoy the presence of the Son, but not the fullness of the Father. Since they weren't valiant in the testimony of Jesus, they don't obtain a crown like in God's kingdom. Still, we see the glory of the terrestrial exceeds in all things the glory of the telestial in power, might, and dominion. Oh man, we've saved the best for last. This is my favorite part, to the top. This is the greatest and most glorious celestial kingdom. Here, God the Father, the supreme and almighty reigns. Those who make it here received the testimony of Jesus, believed in him, and were baptized in his name by immersion according to the commandment. Their glory is that of the Son, and they'll dwell in the presence of God and Christ forever and ever. Now, because they fully embrace Jesus Christ's merits, mercy, and grace, 
they're fit to be crowned and become kings and queens, priests and priestesses, and receive of God's fullness and glory. Witness how great their reward and eternal their glory is. For the Father has given all things into their hands. He gives them great power, might, and dominion, because by their faith and works on earth, they overcame and are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Families here are united forever. And as you look around, you'll see some relatives and friends you know, love, and miss. Yeah, I know, we wish we could just stay here longer and enjoy this incredible place, but the time's not yet. You can come back, however, as you make and keep covenants. Yes, your decisions determine your destiny. But for right now, this ride is returning back to the Johnson Farm where we started. And now let's hear Joseph and Sydney's final dispensation witness. After the testimonies that have already been given of Jesus Christ, this is the testimony which we give of him, that he lives, for we saw him even on the right hand of God. And we heard the voice bearing record that he is the only begotten of the Father, that by him and through him the worlds are and were created, and the inhabitants thereof are begotten sons and daughters of God. And as this most epic of visions closes, the elders stare at Joseph, who's beaming with light and glory, and then notice Sidney pale and exhausted. As Joseph recognizes this contrast, he concludes, Sidney's not as used to it as I am. Next time, we'll learn about one of the most amazing missionaries of the Restoration, Sister Lucy Mack Smith. It takes a lot to make these videos, so to keep Line Upon Line free for everyone, consider donating. The link's in the description below. And thanks for watching. This episode is packed with info, so you might want to watch it again to make sure you didn't miss anything, including the hilarious jokes. If you feel this video has helped you on your path towards truth and Christian discipleship, please subscribe and share. Most importantly, go read the scriptures for yourself.